Hi, everyone. Um, this is the session four for the round four. Hi, everyone. I'm Nico Alinho from Gaia Asia Pacific, and I'll be uh, discussing the complex problems of uh, waste management. Uh, this is session four um, of the Zero Waste uh, Communities Training organized by Trash Hero. Uh, first, uh, what is a wicked problem? So this, uh, this is a planning concept that was developed uh, in the 1970s. And uh, it uh, actually involves uh, complex and many interconnected issues that cannot be solved by one solution. So a uh, wicked problem uh, involves um, behavior change. So every wicked problem is a symptom of another problem. So there's, you see the uh, interconnectedness of, of uh, a wicked problem um, using, for example, uh, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, for example, uh, looking, uh, using this as an example as a, of a wicked problem, uh, we'll see the interconnectedness of uh, this pandemic and how uh, it greatly affects other uh, uh, issues like uh, access to livelihood, um, the uh, mobility of, uh, of people, um, the social uh, interactions of families, friends, uh, of co-workers, and it really shook up uh, our entire uh, experience, uh, I guess, in the last uh, uh, 12 months. And uh, a wicked problem, uh, there's no uh, single solution that can, in a way, uh, solve or address uh, this. So going back to the pandemic uh, example, um, initially, uh, governments have tried to uh, do uh, lockdowns, um, uh, closed down businesses, uh, required people to stay at home, to wear masks, and, and, and other um, solutions. But uh, looking at this problem, you see different uh, things or uh, new problems that, that come out from this um, from these uh, solutions. So when you close down businesses or ask people to stay at home, then you have um, a number of livelihoods that are in a way uh, impacted by this. So you have uh, people losing their jobs, you have businesses that are in a way shutting down uh, permanently. Uh, you also have um, people not being able to earn their livelihood. Um, it, also, it also affected uh, our, uh, in a way, uh, connections with, with um, our uh, networks, with friends and family. We're not able to see them. Um, for, for some people, uh, uh, we are in a way uh, stuck with the uh, doing virtual um, uh, meetings like this. Um, and for others, they, this type of, uh, of uh, interaction is in a way um, not conducive for them, for example, to, to learn. Maybe it, it would be, I guess, easier for them to, to just uh, sit around and meet physically, which I, I think would be, uh, might be a better option in terms of learning. So anyway, going back, it's uh, uh, wicked problems uh, deal with, uh, with uh, a, a com the complex, um, a, a complex uh, situation. Uh, if I would co compare this to a um, a simple problem, which maybe has a well-defined and stable uh, problem statement, and then uh, there's a definite stopping point, and then uh, yeah, maybe the the simplest example I can think of is, for example, my my personal hunger. So. Um, if I feel hungry, then the solution would be I, I look for food or I cook my own food so I can address my problem. So there's already a solution. 
but in the case of uh, wicked problems like poverty or the pandemic, then you have a, a different uh, experience. And I, I think in in this uh, uh, in this exercise, um, we need a different uh, lens or approach to uh, make sure that uh, we are able to uh, outline what types of um, uh, solutions or activities or um, approaches we need to do so in order to um, reach that uh, main goal. So uh, in the previous slide, the, the main goal of, uh, of a wicked problem is not to uh, recommend or uh, outline a number of solutions, but rather have a better understanding of the situation. So hopefully in this uh, session, we'll get to that um, uh, uh, goal by, by looking at um, the waste problem and seeing uh, what are the ways that we can um, uh, be better informed so that we can uh, provide clarity on, on uh, this situation or on you know, this problem. So um, to approach this, it, it's important for us to uh, have a common vision. So in, in this case, uh, in the past uh, three or four sessions, we've in a way uh, uh, seen we would like we would like to envision a zero waste world, a, a world uh, or a community or a city where nothing is wasted. So looking at this. Um, illustration, uh, seeing it maybe uh, in our vision board, uh, or uh, if we put it in our in our meeting room, this is something that we aspire for. So um, these are the things that we would like to happen, maybe in the next five or 10 or 20 years uh, in, in our cities. But in order to get there, um, we need to uh, get some clarity or we need to understand uh, the situation first. So we have uh, a waste problem, obviously, and it has different impacts. You have your uh, congested landfills, um, marine life or uh, wildlife ingesting plastic waste, um, cities struggling with waste collection. That's why other uh, households or waste generators rely on open burning. And then you also have the potential impact of uh, of ingesting uh, plastic waste uh, on human health. And uh, another uh, piece is the looking at the cause of the waste problem. So these are just examples. Uh, there uh, obviously there are a lot uh, more causes, but uh, just to look at what we're dealing with, uh, for example. Um, the lack of waste-free uh, consumer options. Uh, whenever we buy uh, these products from these companies, there's no, not much option available to us uh, that are in a way uh, packaging free. Um, uh, cities or, or countries rather also deal with uh, growing uh, waste trade. So uh, with countries that are in a way uh, think that maybe it's cheaper for us just to uh, export the waste elsewhere. Uh, there's a, another group of people, uh, especially in Asia that actually deal or suffer uh, these types of waste dumping. And then you also have uh, other causes like overconsumption, which creates more waste. And then um, uh, cities that in a way uh, do not have enough resources to uh, uh, implement collection programs as well as um, uh, creating stable markets for uh, recycling. So that's why not all uh, uh, packaging materials or materials that we throw away, not all of them can be recycled uh, because um, some of them can be recycled technologically. Others, it's really because of um, the market forces. Uh, just to uh, give us a guide on, on how to uh, in a way, quote unquote, uh, solve the waste problem. I uh, made this mind map to uh, just illustrate the types of solutions that uh, our cities or communities are offering in terms of solving the waste problem. So I tried to categorize some of them. So for example, 
uh, economic solutions is uh, looking at um, putting up more investments in uh, waste management infrastructure. But you do have, um, again, you see the, um, the interconnectedness to other uh, issues or concerns on, okay, um, I, can, I can do that. I can put more investments in it, but um, governments are in a way uh, struggling where to um, get the money to, to pay for these um, facilities. Um, other cities uh, are, are struggling where to put uh, these uh, recycling um, machines or recycling uh, um, centers because um, cities do, do not have enough land for them. Um, there are also problems with the unstable recycling market where um, some of the things can be te technically recycled, but there's not enough in market incentive for them to be, in a way, um, uh, collected and, and processed later on. Um, and under uh, social uh, solutions, uh, we also have to deal uh, with uh, narratives in this case. And in order to do that is uh, the, I think the top of mind for a lot of people would do uh, education drives, for example, to at least uh, generate or raise awareness among households and other uh, waste generators. And uh, the things that we need to deal with is we have the prevailing narratives where uh, people are being blamed for uh, for the waste. Uh, the waste is being seen as a litter problem because um, people or households do not have the discipline to, uh, for example, sort their waste. And um, you also have to deal with um, mixed waste in transfer stations. So this means, uh, for example, I, I am in a way uh, already aware of the need to sort my waste and I can separate it at home, but uh, I will just get in a way frustrated when I see uh, the waste collector uh, picking up my, my waste and uh, just putting it in one bin. So it, uh, it's a, uh, it will discourage uh, people like me to um, continue doing it. Um, there are other uh, solutions, uh, technological, uh, it would be, for example, uh, looking at disposal options like incinerators and landfills. Uh, like the others, you also de have to deal with um, uh, risks or, or factors like uh, where to put uh, the ash that uh, uh, is produced by uh, these burning machines. Uh, you need to put it in a, uh, in a treatment facility or in a specialized landfill for hazardous waste. You also have to deal with um, feedstock quotas. So feedstock quotas mean um, the, uh, the minimum number of waste or volume of waste that you need to feed uh, or uh, put in, inside incinerators so that they can run uh, efficiently. So these incinerators need a lot of waste so that they can function well. So this in a way um, discourages uh, cities and communities to actually pursue reduction or recycling measures. Um, uh, political uh, solutions, uh, obviously it's really looking at policies or laws that can, can require uh, collection of sorted waste, as well as plastic bans. Um, uh, you've heard stories about uh, different stakeholders, or especially businesses that are opposing bans, for example, because um, it will affect their businesses or their uh, operations. You also have cities or uh, governments that are struggling in terms of uh, allocating resources, especially during the pandemic. So they're in a way, in response, they would be in a way set aside um, these innovations like uh, waste management programs because I need more uh, resources or funds to um, uh, maintain or run my COVID-19 response. Uh, there are also issues on um, being uh, waste management or sorting being an inconvenient exercise. Therefore, it becomes a uh, an unpopular um, uh, move for, for voters. And um, there, in a way, politicians uh, you know, 
you know, we get uh, scared or concerned that um, these types of uh, activities, if I force it to people, then I might get, uh, I might not get the votes uh, in the next election, for example. So um, just going back to um, the uh, session before about zero waste, uh, just wanted to do a recap on what, uh, what's happening uh, at least, uh, or what we want to happen. Uh, these are the uh, different components or pieces of, of zero waste. And at least the first floor is something that uh, we would like um, cities to start if uh, it's not yet uh, existent. And um, to actually get to this, um, we need to understand the, the situation better. And, um, just to uh, highlight some of the information that we need to get from maybe baseline surveys or uh, waste audits or asking questions to um, decision makers and uh, other stakeholders. So looking at, for example, this waste composition, we see that a lot of our waste come from or uh, are actually organic. So this, it helps inform us that um, this problem, um, we can actually uh, readily address the organic waste first before you know, we're trying to deal with the other types of waste. So by doing this, then you're already um, solving or, or addressing half of the problem. Um, you also have um, some other questions to deal or just to help us inform and then get a better understanding of the situation or this problem. So. We look at the geographical context of uh, our city or community. What are the uh, things that we need to deal with? Uh, is the uh, area um, flat? Uh, are there uh, hilly areas that may be difficult for waste collection? Is it uh, an urban area where um, land is uh, very expensive? It will be difficult to set up um, recycling facilities and uh, also looking at the existing uh, collection service. So who's already on board? Um, do we already have enough collectors? Um, are they collecting efficiently, uh, et cetera? And uh, next is uh, understanding our audience. So audience here means uh, it would be um, the households uh, and other waste generators like businesses, schools, uh, community institutions, as well as uh, decision makers. And uh, these are just uh, questions that uh, you can use when, whenever you need to uh, do, for example, uh, uh, profiles, uh, baseline profiles of uh, these different stakeholders. You need to understand um, their uh, relationship with each other, um, how they are, what's the role of, uh, of these stakeholders in this particular uh, problem or issue, and um, what are the uh, ongoing structures or practices that already uh, are happening um, in these uh, communities or cities. And um, so just to help you understand um, the questions previously, uh, at least in relation to waste, then uh, here are some questions that we can uh, try to um, ask uh, these stakeholders. So looking at the uh, waste management situation, um, the current uh, collection programs, and um, if people would be in a way willing to uh, start this uh, separation uh, program, then what types of categories, for example, they need to uh, consider. Um, and these questions are, all uh, in way suggestions, so uh, feel free to modify them, uh, but uh, at least you'll have a starting point. Again, th these uh, questions or the previous slides um, help us get the information we need so that we can understand or get a clearer uh, picture of the, uh, the, the waste problem. So. Clarity uh, brings us closer to uh, understanding or seeing the common vision, which is a, a zero waste um, a future. Um, so just to uh, 
go through the different um, cases. So what I have here is I have two cases. First is the uh, flood prone cities. Uh, one specific example is in uh, this city called Malabon in the Philippines. Uh, some of the problems that this city is experiencing, uh, there's, uh, of course, you have, uh, in these cases, they have voice problems, but other than that, uh, you have uh, other um, related problems that they also have to deal with. So it's not just um, fixing waste management. So it also affects other things like um, there's also flooding in, in the city. So some parts are actually below sea level. And um, since there's uh, flooding, it, it, uh, it gets worse uh, when you have clogged uh, drainage systems or some of your water rivers are full of uh, waste. And you also have um, a high density city. So it's very populous and you don't have enough space or open space to build uh, additional facilities where you can, for example, manage your uh, municipal waste. Um, you also have to deal with um, businesses that are not uh, very supportive of regulations. So in the case of Malabon, it is near a fishing uh, fish port, which are obviously they, they use a lot of plastic and uh, they've uh, in a way communicated to the government that uh, this is not something that uh, they would like to see in, in uh, being implemented in the city. Another example are uh, the islands. So looking at, um, there are several examples here like the Thousand Islands in Indonesia, Cham Islands in Vietnam and Sikihor in the Philippines. Um, these are just examples, but uh, in, in a typical island setting, um, you don't have a lot of space uh, for landfills as well as recycling infrastructure or centers. So. Um, recycling centers need a lot of material uh, in order for it to be um, efficient or operational. But in islands, they don't have enough people, so they don't produce a lot of waste. So there's no economic incentive for them to build uh, such facilities. Um, these uh, places are also far away from urban centers, so it's uh, expensive for them to transport waste. Um, it's very logistically challenging. Um, some of them are, uh, for example, Thousand Islands in Indonesia, it's three hours away from Jakarta by boat. So it's quite uh, challenging, difficult to, to transport waste uh, from that area. Um, you also have, uh, at least in some areas, uh, increased pressure to accommodate more tourists so because it can earn uh, more income from that. So in, in Huayan, for example, uh, tourists produce uh, or generate three times uh, more waste compared to locals. And then lastly is, uh, this is on you. So this is a, a, a invitation to do a mind map or do a, a, an exercise for your community or your city. Uh, I left some guide questions here on how um, you can address the wicked waste problem in your community. So uh, again, I have mentioned earlier, you need to uh, get a, a clearer understanding of the situation. So by looking again at the guide questions that I've uh, shared earlier, looking at what's the waste situation right now, what is the collection systems that are already available? Are there logistical challenges implementing uh, these waste programs? Um, maybe there are already solutions that are already happening and maybe you can also make recommendations that what other things that can be added uh, to make it uh, uh, better or more efficient. And uh, again, as, as uh, this exercise uh, shows that this is a wicked problem. So there are actually, even though we try to propose different solutions, uh, these are not necessarily right or wrong. Each of them have uh, risks, challenges on, on how you can uh, introduce or implement them.
So yeah, thanks uh, for listening. <laughs>